The relatively new tabs block has been such a great addition to Generate Blocks Pro. I thought I'd take a second to show you in this video how you could create a pricing table where you can toggle between monthly and yearly pricing, which is something we come up against quite often, especially if you're building any kind of software websites or anything like that. It's actually really, really simple to do, and you can use the tabs block pretty much just as it comes to get exactly what you need. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at how it's done. All right, so on this site, I just have Generate Blocks and Generate Blocks Pro installed. And what we're gonna do is actually just steal a pricing toggle here from the Generate Blocks pattern library. Now this is just get us set up with having some kind of pricing table already ready to go. So I'm just gonna filter this down to the free pricing tables. And we'll just go ahead and go here with this dark themed one. We'll hit copy and I'll go back in here and we'll paste this in. So that'll get us a good starting point so we can go ahead and build this out without having to fumble through everything it would take to set up these tables. All right, so let's go ahead and expand this list view open so we can see what we're working with here. And what we're gonna actually wanna do is put a tabs element in here. So just to give us a little room, I'm gonna go to this inner container and I'm gonna add a little bit more top and bottom padding just so we have some room to work with. Now I'm gonna grab this grid block and I'm gonna go here and do insert before. Now we can't see the text here, so just to make that easier, I'm gonna change the color here of the text to white, and that way we can see it. And what I'm gonna do here is search for a tabs block, and you can see it here. We'll go ahead and add it, and when you do that, it gives you three choices, the horizontal tabs, the vertical tabs, and the button tabs. I almost always start with the button tabs, and that's gonna actually work perfect for this scenario, so we'll go ahead and hit the button tabs. So now you'll see in our list view, we have our tabs. Inside of it, we have tab buttons, we have tab items, and by default, it gives you two of them, which happens to work out perfect since we're gonna have a monthly and annual toggle. All right, so what we wanna do here is go ahead and grab this grid block that has our pricing table, and I'm gonna copy that block, and then we can go ahead and remove that from here. I'm gonna go in here to the tab one content, We'll delete out the default paragraph, and I'm just gonna paste in that grid block with the pricing table. We'll go in here to tab item number two, and we'll do the same thing. We'll delete the paragraph, and we'll paste in the grid block with our pricing table. So now, unfortunately, you can't tell when you're tabbing between one or the other, but we can fix that. We'll just go to tab one, and we're gonna change this to monthly. We'll go to tab two, and we'll change this to annual. Now, we want the price on the monthly to be higher than annual, so here on the monthly tab, we're gonna change this to maybe $59 a month, we'll change this to $299, and we'll change this to $499. And now you can see when we're on monthly, these are our prices, and on annual, these are our prices. We'll go ahead and update this, we'll refresh on the front end, and we'll make sure that it's all working. Now, of course, this is working great, but this really isn't the style I'd wanna go for. I wanna go with something that looks more like a toggle. So to do that, we're actually gonna adjust the settings here inside these tab buttons. Now, by default, if we go to the tabs, the sync tab item styles is toggled on, and you wanna go ahead and leave that. That just means when you change the tab button on one of them, it goes ahead and updates the other as well. Now, there are some cases where you wanna turn this off and we can show some scenarios like that. But for right now, let's go ahead and leave that on. So what I wanna do is go to this tab buttons container. Currently, it's taking up the full width, but I actually want it to just take up as much width as needed for those buttons. So to do that, I'm gonna scroll down here to the sizing section. And in the width, I'm gonna type in max hyphen content. And this will just make sure that this tab buttons container is only as wide as with the content that's inside of it. Now, of course, it pushed it over to the left, but we can fix that by giving the right and left margin of auto. So in here, I'll type in auto, and that will center us back up right where we started. But now that tab buttons container isn't taking up the full space. And the reason I want to do this is because I want to put a background color behind it. So we'll go ahead here with this tabs button container selected go to the background, and we're gonna choose a dark color. You almost can't see it here. In fact, the colors I have in this palette don't match really well, so I'm just gonna go over here, and we'll just make it slightly darker than the background, which I realize is kinda of hard to see on the screen. 
We'll go up here to our padding set settings. We'll link those values together and we'll do something like four pixels of padding around it. Now you can't quite see it still, but here in a second, it'll be more obvious. Now, the last thing I wanna to do to this container is change the border radius. I'm just gonna give it a very big value, which is gonna make it a pill shape. And now the buttons are kind of sticking outside of that pill shape, but we can fix that by going up here to the overflow and changing it from default to hidden. And that will cut off the corner of those buttons. We're gonna fix those more anyways, but for right now, we'll go ahead and hide any of the overflow. Now we can click into the buttons here and we're gonna get these styled. What you have here is its default state, in the middle is hover, and on the right is the current one. So what we're gonna do is say, when we're on the current one, we actually want the background to be white and the text to be black. And when we're on the default state, let's go ahead and just give this a really dark color with white text, which we already have the white text in there. And maybe for hover, we just give it a slightly lighter gray, which you can see here. Maybe go down a little bit. So you can just tell that you're hovering over it. Now we also need to give this the border radius to match. So I'm gonna link those values and we'll just do a big number again. So now you can see we kind of have a pill shape in here. We'll go ahead and update it and look at it on the front end. So we kind of have this pill shape around it and you can click in between these two. So it looks a little bit more like a toggle, although it's not animating back and forth. I think this style actually works really, really well. Now, if you're like me, you might not like these rounded corners butted up next to each other like that. And this is where we can unlink the values and actually have them push together. So what I'm gonna do is make sure I'm selected this tabs block and up here towards the top, we're gonna uncheck this sync tab item styles. So now any changes we make to one of the buttons is only gonna affect that specific button. So we'll click on this monthly button and on the border radius, I'm gonna unlink these. In the top right, I'm gonna make zero and the bottom right, I'm gonna make zero. Now for the annual one, I'm gonna unlink those and we'll make the top left zero and the bottom left zero. Now you can see those are kind of flat against each other, but they do have a little bit of space around them. So what I'll do is go back to this tab buttons and since it's set as a flex container, there's actually a default column gap in here. So we'll just go ahead and take that out completely and that will butt these two items right next to each other. So if we hit update, go back to the front end and refresh, we can see here, we can toggle between these two and it's pretty clear which one you're on. I've actually used the tabs block to set up several different things inside of a sandbox site just to get an idea of the different kind of layouts you can achieve using the tabs block. Here you can see you actually swap between three different packages in my tabs two version. This is kind of similar to what we built today. Tabs three is actually set up to be kind of a testimonial slider type thing, except it doesn't automatically slide between the two, but you can see we're going through different testimonials here and another option where it's kind of a vertical setup. You can also do some pretty nice layouts like this and another similar one like this. The tabs block along with the accordion block are such a savior when it comes to getting a ton of content and not completely ruining a layout. Sometimes when you're dealing with pages that just have walls of text, it's really nice to be able to use these kinds of blocks to be able to show and hide content and let the user decide what they wanna see. This really can shorten the length of your pages and make everything a little bit easier to design around. If you're interested in checking out more Generate Press and Generate Blocks content, you can click on either of the videos here. And if you'd like to come hang out with us inside the Admin Bar community, we got over 7,000 WordPress professionals hanging out and sharing all kinds of cool tips and tricks.